Hello everyone. I hope we are keeping safe in our homes. In our revision of NCRT climate, I am now devoting this video towards the study of climatic classification of world. Köppen's climatic classification scheme is given in our NCRT. Name of the scholar is Vladimir Köppen. He was a German climatologist and he actually propounded the empirical classification scheme for climate. Empirical classification scheme is defined to be the scheme that has absolute value of temperature and precipitation to carve out the categories of climate. In the original scheme that was 1931, Köppen essentially talked about five climate types and each major climate types was denoted with the upper cases of alphabetical symbols. So apart from learning what exactly the climatic regions are, we need to be at comfort level of both the upper and the lower cases of the climatic classification scheme. Upper essentially relates to the major climate like capital A stands for tropical, B for dry, C for subtropical or we can also call it warm temperate as our NCRT reads, D is for cold temperate climate and E is for polar climate. There are essentially subcategories for each one of them. Like India is a tropical climate, so it essentially is a type of climate. Indonesia is also a type of climate, tropical. But what makes India and Indonesia different from each other is that India is a m, lowercase m, monsoonal. And Indonesia is a f, f, rainy throughout the year, well distributed precipitation throughout the year. We are learning each of these alphabetical symbols with the reference of NCRT content and of course certain defined maps as our support item. So let us get going with climatic regions of the world as Köppen's climatic classification. Right, so we are picking up the chapter number 12 which is uh, world's climate and climate change though we will not be focusing on change of climate as that is not our domain right now. Now, if I read it from NCRT, as I said in the beginning, I'm slightly zooming it up. Three broad approaches have been adopted for classifying climate. They are empirical, genetic and applied. Empirical classification is based on observed data, particularly on temperature and precipitation. This is where we pick up Köppen's classification and that is what we'll be emphasizing our study on. The genetic classification attempts to organize climate according to their causes. And when we according to their causes, as in we can take the reference of the climate type as uh, thermal zones of the world. So I'm taking the cause as temperature and I'm demarcating it. And applied classification is for specific purpose. We are using application of relativity. of temperature and precipitation. So there are three different types or approaches of climatic classification, empirical, genetic and applied. Köppen's classification is essentially an empirical one. Let us see it from our NCRT. So if we take Köppen's scheme of climatic classification, uh, this climatic classification as we are aware of is the empirical climatic classification scheme. The original work can be traced back to the beginning of 20th century, but the scheme for which he is popularly known is 1931 and 1936. So he has selected values of temperature and precipitation to classify the climate. And in order to denote the climate type, he has recognized five major climatic groups. These five major climatic groups have got four that are based on temperature. So I straightforward take you to this table. The capital A that is tropical type of climate, capital C that is warm temperate, you can also call it subtropical. Climate D that is cold snow frost climate, you can also call it cold temperate climate. And capital E that is cold climate, you can also call it polar climate, are the climate types that are based on temperature. So temperature based climate type is tropical, subtropical, temperate and polar. And then I read it from our NCRT, 
the temperature based categories are 4 and 1 is based on precipitation. So, which is the climate type that is based on precipitation? It is B type of climate that is dry climate. So, B type of climate is based on precipitation, the only climate type that is based on precipitation. A, C, D and E are the climate type that is based on temperature. Essentially relating to 1931 scheme, I can notice that this climate includes A type, B type, C type, D type and E type. It was in 1936 that he incorporated H type which is missing in this diagram. And if I have to emphasize on the categories that has been demarcated, A type of climate that stands for tropical climate is accounting for some 22 percent of the total area of the world. B type of climate that qualifies to be the dry climate notice 32.2 percent so largest share. C type of climate is subtropical climate. Subtropical climate can also be called as uh, warm temperate climate. It has got lesser share some 16.5. D type of climate is temperate climate 24 percent and E type of climate is polar climate which is accounting for 5.1 percent. So, this climatic classification scheme 1931 is giving us the appropriation of the areas that different type of climate includes. What is missing is H type of climate that stands for mountain climate type. Let us see NCRT to further understand it. But we easily can understand that only saying it is a tropical climate do not suffice, only saying it is dry climate or temperate cold. So, there are second level alphabetical symbols which I will make you understand. But before that we can see there is an one more climate mentioned in the table that is H type of climate. As I insisted this was added to the climatic scheme by Köppen in 1936 and it readily explains cold due to elevation. So, which type of climate H type of climate is? It is mountain climate or highland climate. So, if I have to take which type of climate Himalayas will have, it will have H type of climate. And what are the principal categories of climate? It is six major types of climate type. Each one of them denoted with alphabetical symbol upper cases A, C, D and E are based on temperature, B is based on precipitation and H is height based category. If I have to take the understanding of this comparatively on map of world, uh, which are the climate types that has been given to us? A type of climate is a tropical climate. So, if I roughly demarcate equator to be traversing from here, we are taking A type of climate essentially between 0 degrees to 30 degrees north and south. This is how we demarcate tropical climate. And then we have got B type of climate which is all dry climate. Do not miss to see out that B type of climate has got a big broad area both in northern and southern hemisphere. The blue color shaded here is E type of climate that is polar climate with Greenland and Antarctica being the major ones. The subtropical climate has been demarcated with green color here, the C type of climate. I can notice the C type of climate in Argentina, Brazil. I can notice it in Southeast Australia. I can see it in China. I can see it in Europe. And then we can easily notice the taiga belt, the forest belt. This is D type of climate, whether it is Siberia or it is northern Canada. And we want to have a comparative reference of that beyond as well. So, what we have learned so far is that climatic category is based on temperature includes A, C, D type of climate based on precipitation includes B type of climate which we can see out here. I need to add E here and if I have to talk about altitudinal climate which is not visible here. It is H type of climate wherever there is availability of mountains. If based on temperature I have got A tropical, 
सी सब ट्रॉपिकल एंड डी टेम्परेट टाइप्स ऑफ क्लाइमेट दे आर ऑलवेज यूटिलाइज विद प्रेसिपिटेशन बेस्ड लोअर केसेस सो आई हैव गॉट स्मॉल एफ दैट स्टैंड फॉर रेनी थ्रू आउट द ईयर लेट मी राइट इट लाइक दिस सो देर इज नो कन्फ्यूजन एम स्टैंड फॉर मॉनसूनल S stands for dry summers and W stands for dry winters as in whenever I'll be utilizing climate type A I'll be using any of these four alphabetical symbols as second level alphabetical symbols so if I'm reading it as AF I'll say tropical rainy if I'll say AM I'll say tropical monsoonal and if i'll say aw i'll say it is dry winters more or less as monsoonal similarly subtropical well distributed rain subtropical dry winters subtropical dry summers you know this is the way we demarcate it temperate well distributed rain temperate dry winters and if i take the category precipitation so precipitation has got b type of climate and b the lower cases are not utilized at second level it is both the upper cases and exclusively utilized for b type of climate so if i am bw i am desert type of climate and if i am bs i am steppy type of climate or you can call me semi arid so if the climatic alphabetical symbol is bw it's a desert but if it is bs it is steppy and what is left out with us based on temperature so putting it out here e type of climate which is polar climate has got the specific lower cases or a specific uh, second level alphabetical symbols and they are t that stands for tundra climate subpolar you can call it and f that stands for frosted i want you to take you to ncert now right so if we take the reference of the alphabetical symbols in both upper and lower cases we have understood that a c and d type of climate is been utilized with alphabetical symbols as f m s and w so tropical climate that is a type of climate subtropical climate that is c type of climate and temperate climate that is d type of climate can be utilized with f which is well distributed rain or rainfall well distributed throughout the year m monsoonal seasonal precipitation s dry summers and w dry winters so acd types of climate that is tropical subtropical and temperate will have utility of these four lower cases of alphabetical symbol and that can be added with third level alphabetical symbols of small a b c and d and what is the meaning of small a b c and d that we are taking the intensity of summers as in a type of climate will be related to warm or hot summers with more than 22 degrees celsius of temperature while b type of climate will have summer temperature less than 22 degrees celsius so applying it we can make sense with climate represented by koppen's alphabetical symbols which are they concentrate on the climate type a type of climate tropical humid climate has af tropical wet no dry season excellently applied with equatorial climate it remains warm and it remains wet throughout the year tropical monsoonal am where we will have short dry season with more than 70% of annual rain being confined in 3 to 4 months of the year then we have tropical wet dry aw dry winters we popularly call it savanna type of climate getting to c type of climate warm temperate or subtropical c is also followed on by f m and w so if i see cf in the ncert table it is written twice 
the third level alphabetical symbol however is different. So, CF is subtropical with no dry season but CFA is warm summers because A stands for more than 22 degrees Celsius of temperature and CFB will represent what? Cool summers with less than 22 degrees Celsius of temperature. That is the reason CFB is west coast European type of climate and humid subtropical CFA is China and Florida type of climate. And in between if I ask you to see CS, S dry summers, it is Mediterranean climate, winters are wet, summers are dry. And why winters are wet? Because you need to take the pressure bells and wind that I discussed in one of the earlier videos that onshore westerlies will be applicable to Mediterranean regions only during winters. And this onshore westerlies will result into winter precipitation and summer will be dry. And now if I apply to D type of climate, so DF, no dry season, DW, winters are dry. Subarctic, Manchurian climate, humid continental, taiga type of climate. So, if I, we have to quickly repeat the sequence, I will ask you to see this here, AF equatorial, AM monsoonal, AW savanna, CFA China type or Florida type, CFB European type, CS Mediterranean dry summers, onshore westerlies only during winter, winter season I will have precipitation. DF is excellent taiga type of climate. DW is excellent Manchurian type of climate. So, I have got utility of small f, small m, small s and small w as second level alphabetical symbol, small a, small b, small c and small d as third level alphabetical symbol utilized with climate type called a, c and d. But we know that there is one more climate which is based on temperature and that is E type of climate. How Köppen has enlarged E type of climate? So, for E type of climate, the second level alphabetical symbols are always upper cases namely T and F. Where T stands for tundra, you can call it subpolar climate and F stands for frosted, you can recognize it as cold frozen polar climate. So, E type of climate has got tundra subpolar and frosted true polar climate. So, after E the next level alphabetical symbol will be capital letters of T and F. So, if I take it from NCRT can you notice it here E type of climate is tundra E T and polar ice cap E F. No true summers, but summers still are there and perennial ice means no season cycle. So, the second level alphabetical symbol with E type of climate will always be the two capital letters namely T and F. So, remind yourself that though there were climate type A, C, D and E based on temperature, A, C, D goes with similar set of second and third level of alphabetical symbol, E goes with a different set of alphabetical symbols. And if now I have to make sense with B type of climate that is dry climate. I need to understand that B type of climate also have its own set of alphabetical symbol. They are referred as capital W and capital S. W stands for desert, absolute arid climate and S stands for steppe which represents semi-arid climate. So, it is dry but it is not a desert. So, that means just like E type of climate, B will have its own alphabetical symbols. And if I take NCRT to understand it, B type of climate has got BS and BW. So, what is BS? BS is steppe and BW is desert. So, can we read it? Low latitude semi arid, low latitude arid. So, W stands for arid and S stands for semi arid. But what I am noticing is that I do have got B, S mid latitude as well. 
what does that mean level 1 alphabetical symbol b added with level 2 alphabetical symbol w and s will have two more alphabetical symbols as k and h k stands for cold cold as in colder it's a german term and h stands for hot so if i am a mid latitudinal semi arid or arid area i'll be called k and if i am low latitudinal so i'll be h so where do i apply h if i am low latitudinal and where do i apply k when i am mid latitudinal that means b type of climate will have its own dedicated second and third level alphabetical symbols that will be applied to denote the climate type so if i am gobi desert i'll be b w k if i am sahara desert i'll be b w h this is how we take the distinction so mid latitude and high latitude simply goes as a c d type of climate level 1 can use level 2 alphabetical symbols which can be f m s or w and after that we can use the third level alphabetical symbol which will be a b c and d what exactly a b c and d is standing for they are standing for the intensity and duration of summers like a will stand for more than 22 degrees celsius of summer temperature b is less than 22 degrees celsius of summer temperature so if i have to make the alphabetical symbol how i can make it c will be followed on by f and then a this is how it is used and what about b b has got second level alphabetical symbols as upper cases w or s and then it has got its own third level alphabetical cases h and k h stands for hot desert and k stands for cold that is a german term standing for cold and when it comes to e type of climate level 1 alphabetical symbol the level 2 is only sufficient and we don't have any level 3 alphabetical symbols for it so tundra and frosted so climate type number 1 that is a type of climate tropical humid climate the tropical humid climate exists between tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn that is the reason we refer it as tropical climate warm the sun being overhead throughout the year the presence of intertropical convergence zone makes the climate hot and humid however this doesn't justify the details of the climate so the climate type as we have seen in the table is divided into 3 af am and aw what is af type of climate it is excellently referred as equatorial climate what is equatorial climate found near equator major areas are amazon basin in south america and west equatorial belt in africa the west equatorial belt in africa is called upper guinea it also extends in islands of east indies you can easily read it indonesia makes important location for it significant amount of rainfall occurs every month of the year as thunder showers in the afternoon temperature is uniformly high and annual range of temperature is negligible what is the best way i can apply af type of climate two adjective is sufficient warm and wet throughout the year simple two terms tropical monsoonal am it is the climate found over indian subcontinent northeastern part of south america and northern australia heavy rainfall occurs mostly in summers so i am monsoonal with 70% of annual rain confined in 3 to 4 months of the year and what is tropical wet dry climate tropical wet dry climate occurs in northern south of af type of climate it borders with dry climate in western part of the continent and ca for cw on the eastern part extensive aw type of climate is found in north south of amazon forest in brazil and adjoining parts all area shaded here is a type of climate now you need to distinguish if i am in amazon basin if i am in upper guinea if i am in congo basin 
and if i am in east indies indonesia east timor papua new guinea which type of climate i am experiencing it is af what is the climate that i am noticing in india indo china peninsula it is am type of climate and what is the climate that i am noticing right here from upper guinea to east africa to entire horseshoe magnet actually this belt extends from cameroon to angola and i also see this belt right here in lanos La and campos grasslands in brazil which type of climate it is aw so how many types of a climate we have we have af type of climate which is equatorial what is the two important uh, characteristics that we can remind us of it is wet and warm throughout the year season cycle is not there and what is the similarity that i see between am and aw type of climate season cycle prevails summers are wet location wise which is the area where i find af type of climate amazon basin congo basin and indonesia which are the locations where i find am type of climate india and indo china peninsula are best location and savanna cameroon to angola the horseshoe magnet horseshoe horseshoe shape magnet largest savanna belt otherwise i do see savanna belt in northern australia i do see it in lanos and campos the dry climate is characterized by very low rainfall which is not adequate for the growth of the plant this climate covers a large area of the planet extending over large continent from 15 to 60 degrees north and south of equator on the western margins of the continent are joining the cold current particularly over west coast of south america they extend more equatorwards and occurs along the coastal area in middle latitudes however they are found much in the interiors of the continent now carefully see this if i am talking about more towards equator i'll be warmer so it will be dry and warm if i'm more towards higher latitude it will be drier but cold similarly dry climates are divided into steppy or semi arid and desert bw they can be further subdivided as subtropical and subtropical desert with the steppy in mid latitude so bwh and k can be corresponding with bsh and bsk so it is basically extending from mid to high latitude now there is a brief details given to us so we want to read it the subtropical steppe bsh and the subtropical desert bwh the subtropical steppe and subtropical desert have common precipitation and temperature characteristics located in the transitional zone between humid and dry climate subtropical steppe receives slightly more rainfall than desert but rainfall and climate is highly variable the variability of rainfall affects the life in steppe much more than desert rain occurs in short intense thunder showers in deserts and is ineffective in building soil moisture maximum temperature in summers are very high the highest shade temperature of 58 degrees celsius was recorded in libya on 13th september 1922 how do i characterize b type of climate tropical tropical desert b w h sahara rubal khali b w h do great indian desert b w h great australian desert b w h mojave and sonoran deserts but right here this patch is that of steppe north american steppe this patch is of eurasian steppe south african weld steppe pampas of argentina steppe type of climate 
downs of Australia, steppy type of climate. Are you noticing? But this is Gobi Desert. So, this will be B W K. And what is steppy standing for? B S. So, when we talk about dry climate, B type of climate is dry climate. Dry climate is defined with precipitation always less than evaporation. So, I am always having scarcity of water. Depending on the scarcity of water, higher the scarcity, I become desert. Lesser the scarcity, I become steppy. And depending on the temperature conditions, I can be either warmer H or comparatively colder K. Atacama Desert, Sahara Desert, Rub Al Khali of Saudi Arabia, Great Sandy Desert of Australia are excellent examples of B, W, H, the C type of climate. Warm temperate mid latitude climate extends between 30 to 50 degrees on the eastern and western margins of the continent. Now, if we are grouping them, we can easily group them into certain categories. The humid subtropical climate CWA, W dry winters, the Mediterranean climate CS dry summers, humid subtropical with no dry season CFA and marine west coast climate CFB. What are their characteristics? We can understand them one by one before we go any uh, to the map. The humid subtropical climate CWA is occurring polewards of Tropic of Cancer and Capricorn mainly in Northern Indian Plain, South China Interior Plain. Climate is similar to AW except that temperature in winters is warm. That when I become C type of climate, I will be having bigger range of temperature. Mediterranean climate is dry summers. As the name suggests, Mediterranean climate occurs along Mediterranean Sea. Between 30 to 40 degrees latitude, central California, central Chile along the coast of southeast and southwest Australia. Very important thing. These areas comes under the influence of subtropical high in summers and westerly is wind in winters. Hence, the climate is characterized by hot, dry summers, mild, rainy winters. We have got humid subtropical climate. It is li lying in the eastern part of the continent in the subtropical latitude. In this region, air masses are generally unstable and causes rainfall throughout the year. They occur in the eastern United States of America, southern and eastern China, south Japan, northeast Argentina, coastal South Africa and east coast of Australia. And what is CFB? It is marine west coast climate located forward from Mediterranean. Onshore westerlies is there throughout the year. West coast of the continent. Main areas are Northwestern Europe, Western coast of North America, North California, South Chile, Australia, New Zealand. Due to the marine influence, the temperature is moderate in winters. Try to understand it with this. C type of climate as CS. CS type of climate will be in California, will be in Central Chile will be in Mediterranean Sea shoreline, Iberian Peninsula, Eponese Peninsula, Balkan Peninsula, Turkey, right here in Northern Africa, Algeria, Libya, Tunisia. What is this climate? Mediterranean climate. And what is the logic of Mediterranean climate? Something very simple. If we just try to apply the logic of, I am at 30 degrees latitude. 30 degrees latitude is subtropical high and I will have onshore westerlies here, right? And if I change it to winters, subtropical high during winters. Now, apparent shift of sun towards north, so subtropical high will be somewhere placed here 
and onshore westerlies will not be experienced in Mediterranean region. So what will be the area that will experience onshore westerlies throughout the year? Right here, European climate. So what is European climate characterized with? It is a CFB, wet throughout the year. British Columbia, CFB. Southern Chile, CFB. And when I take the reference of New Zealand, CFB. And what is the climate that we have shaded with onshore westerlies only during winters? It's Mediterranean, CS. So what will be the characteristics of CS type of climate? Wet winters. What will be the characteristics of CFB type of climate? Wet throughout the year. And if I go towards the eastern margin, these areas, China type of climate, Piedmont plains of Appalachian, Southeast Australia, Southeast South Africa, which type of climate it is? It is C F A. combined with C W A. So more I go to the higher latitude, it will become C F A and more I remain towards the lower latitude, it will be C W A, east margin. Because these are the climate of easterlies and easterlies will have its onshore effectivity only during summers. That is the reason winters are dry. D type of climate, the cold snow forest climate occurs in large continental area of northern hemisphere between 40 to 70 degrees. DF cold climate with humid winter, DW cold climate with dry winters. The DF climate, cold climate with humid winters occur pole ward in of marine west coast climate and mid latitude steppes. Winters are cold and snowy. Cold climate with dry winters DW, cold climate with dry winters occur mainly in northeastern Asia. The development is pronounced in winters. Anti-cyclone and its weakening in summer sets monsoon like reversal of wind pattern. Are you noticing? DF is essentially related to the continental climate towards the polar area and it is absolutely the forested area, taiga. And DW is essentially called Manchurian type of climate which is nothing but the extension of what we call CFA type of climate towards higher latitude. Because it is in this area where we do experience air masses and arctic frontal precipitation. AF, AF, AF. AW, AW. A M B W H B W H B W H B W K B W K B S B S B W H B S B S B S
CS Mediterranean climate CS CS China type of climate CW CW European climate CFB CFB and now the belt that goes in the subpolar area taiga df and this area is dw that is the reason when i say dw type of climate either i call it manchurian climate or i call it labrador The polar climate is tundra, the tundra climate is often called with the name of the vegetation, short growing period because we do have summers, tundra is very long day night. It is the reason that has got season cycle. It is actually subpolar climate and what is EF? It is frosted climate which does not have any season cycle. And it is actually this area that has got six months of day and night sequence. E F E F E T E T. But what are these? This is H type of climate, mountain climate. H type of climate, mountain climate, because they are not at high latitude, they are at higher altitude. And if you can recall, while learning the mountain climate, we said that depending on the latitudinal location with increasing height, there will be different types of climate conditions that will prevail. So, if Himalayas has got elevation beyond the snow line, which is 4500 meters, I can have tropical monsoonal climate and I can have frosted climate. So, this climate type which has got altitudinal grade is called mountain climate. So, why it is so that in our map uh, Indian Cordilleras, Himalayan Cordilleras are added with the ET and EF type of climate? It is because of height. The H type of climate is governed by Tukulu. In the high mountains, large changes in the mean temperature occurs over shorter distances. Precipitation type and intensity also vary spatially in the highland climate. So, the latitudinal location of the mountain, its height, sun bearing slope and marine influence. I am writing maritime influence are the four factors that determines the climate type. We have learned vegetation, you can simply apply that. If it is Himalayas, it will be AM. With increase in height beyond 1500 meters, it will be CW. Beyond the height of 3800 meters, it will be DF. Beyond the height of 4500 meters, it will be ET and beyond the height of 6000 meters it will be EF. So, basically highland climate is third dimension of latitudinal climate. Another way of revising it quickly can be take note of your NCRT with this support, it will be easy for you to understand the thing. So, when you take the revision picking up these categories of the weather mechanism and the maps that I have suggested areas becomes much easier for you to remember and the categories of the climate as well. Happy learning and all the very best to all of you.